Hello and good day once again. In the last video, I've demonstrated how program execution was done in the IES machine, invented by John Van Neumann. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the instruction set of the same machine before I will uh, demonstrate how programming was done in the succeeding videos. Like the analytical engine, uh, the instruction set of the IES machine is composed of memory and arithmetic instructions. A typic, uh, very important uh, instruction used is called the uh, load MX. Load MX is uh, is an instruction that will transfer that will transfer the content of the address X in the memory into the accumulator. It is like the L of the L command of the analytical engine. However, a convention is used separately because of the memory architecture of the IAS. Remember that the IAS is basically a 40-bit word machine with each word contained using binary, binary representation. It, it uses the whole 40-bit word when data it is used to store data however being a stored program computer it can also be used to store instructions during it during which case the memory can store two instructions because each instruction is composed of 20 bits so the unique characteristic about this affects the branching and looping of programs because when you jump to an instruction you will have to specify whether to jump to the left or jump to the right. So the IES machine is not purely top-down top execution because in cases where there were two instructions, the left instruction is executed first followed by the right instruction. So a load MX is, like, is, is similar to the L command of the analytical engine. So for example, if, if in the analytical engine, we will have minus L002, L003. Okay. In the IES machine, we will have to load first. We say load M of 2. Then we say sub M of 3. Okay. So in, in the analytical engine, an operation card is followed by two load commands. The first load command goes to the ingress access 1 and the second ingress load, load command goes to the ingress access 2. In this case, we only have uh, one input uh, register which is called the MQ. The first register is by default the AC. So when you say load M2, we have AC receives variable 2 and when we say sub m3 we say ac receives its previous value which is m of 2 minus m of 3 so these two sets of instructions are similar to the analytical engine except that in this case we only use one input register which is the ac so the previous in in uh, value is used automatically as the first operand and at the same time the result of any uh, mathematical operation is stored back to the accumulator register or ac so the second command which i'd like to introduce you is the store command in the analytical engine when you say s005 we are storing the result in the egress axis into variable 005. In the analytical engine, we say store M5. In which case, memory variable 5 receives the value of the accumulator. Of the accumulator EC. On the other hand, the SU005 of the analytical engine will cause the egress to store the variable 5. 
So, in this case, we can say that the IAS machine has resembles the analytical engine in the sense that uh, operations are supported similarly. Now, like the analytical engine, the IES machine also has uh, arithmetic operations. It will do an add MX, which means that the accumulator will be incremented by the variable X as addressed in memory. It will have an add absolute MX, which means that the accumulator will be added by a positive number from MX regardless whether it's negative or positive. We also have sub and sub absolute MX. And then we have uh, div, mul and div. And we have a special operation called left shift and another one which is called right shift. Left shift multiplies any the accumulator by 2 and right shift divides the accumulator by 2. Now, uh, the jump commands. The jump commands are like the CF and the CP of the analytical engine, where control is transferred to another portion in the program. However, there's a unique characteristic of the IIS where two instructions can be stored in one word. So we have to specify where to jump, whether jump to the left part of the word or jump to the right part of the word. When we say jump to the left, we say jump M MX 0 to 19, shall we say, Jump M10 0 to 19, which means jump to the word 10, particularly the left part. And when we say jump MX 20 to 39, we jump to the right part okay, of the word X. In the following video, I'm going to show you a sample program in the IAS, which demonstrates uh, the use of these instructions. See you then and goodbye.